Uh, hi guys, my name is Abdullah. I study avionics in Emirates Aviation University. Uh, today in my channel we'll be discussing about motions in two or three-dimensional space. Okay, so I have a unique way of approaching this topic. What I do is first of all I study two general uh, two general situations. Uh, the situations are entirely generalized. When we study those two general situations, both of them are in actually two-dimensional space. And then we will go ahead and we will see some examples which will build on the concepts that we have seen in the first two examples that I have, I'll be giving. And we can also move ahead and study motion in three-dimensional space with some specific examples. So the first thing that we will study today is an object in circular motion so circular motion okay perfect so this is an object in circular motion um, let's take the object is moving in the xy plane this is the xy plane the positive x-axis the negative the positive so the positive y-axis the positive x-axis negative x-axis and the negative y-axis okay and this is the origin perfect now let's say this is the path of the object in a circular motion okay uh, not a perfect circle sorry the position vector of the object at any particular time is given by r okay r is dependent on time and then Let's say that we have an angle of theta right here. Got me? Perfect. So now let's go ahead and uh, let's see what we can derive from this, uh, what we can analyze from this situation. And one more piece of information, the radius of the circular movement is a constant B. It does not change with time. The angular speed is also constant. So if the angular speed is constant, we can write that d theta over dt, the rate of change of the angle, is a constant w. Okay? Okay, now let's do separation of variables, like a first order differential equation. We will get w dt. Okay? Now we can integrate both the sides. Okay, when we integrate both the sides, we end up with this equation. Theta is equal to Wt plus C. Perfect. Now, we will focus our attention on this particular, uh, on this particular uh, expression. Theta is equal to Wt plus C. We will have theta is equal to Wt plus C. We have the initial condition that says that when t is equal to 0, theta is also equal to 0. So we will put those initial condition 0 is equal to w into 0 plus c. So c is equal to 0. So the final expression becomes theta is equal to wt. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and let's write down the position vector of this particular motion. Okay. The position vector of this particular motion can be given by R is equal to B cos theta. Okay, R is equal to, uh, we'll have B cos theta. And then we will write I plus the J component can be given by B sine theta J. Okay, now we know that the velocity vector can be given by the differentiation of the position vector. So the velocity vector will be given by, but before we go into that, actually, there is something else I need to write down. You see, in this case, the position vector is in terms of theta. But we don't want that. We, we said that it changes with the 
time. So I can replace theta by r is equal to b cos wt, since theta was wt as we derived, plus b sine wt j. Okay, now we can differentiate this to get the velocity vector. So the velocity vector is actually equal to the prime of the position vector and velocity vector can be given by negative w b sine w t i plus w b cos plus wb cos wt j okay perfect now we can calculate the magnitude of this particular uh, velocity vector uh, of a particle moving in a circular motion so the magnitude can be given by this is the magnitude the magnitude will be given by So we will have negative WB sine WT whole square plus WB cos WT whole square. Okay, so we will be left with The velocity vector or the magnitude of the velocity vector will be left with so it will be wb square sine square wt and then we'll have plus wb square to be w square b square w square b square and then we'll have cos square w okay now let me remove the top part here um, I'll remove the top part okay when we remove the top part we are no we are left with What we can do here is we can take under the square root, we can take w square b square as common. We will have w square b square common, and in the bracket, we will have sine square wt plus cos square wt. Okay, and then the magnitude of the velocity vector is given by. The magnitude of the velocity vector is given by the, uh, the square root of. Now, if you notice, sine square wt plus cos square wt is equal to 1, the trigonometric identity 1, so we'll exclude that. We are left with this, and then very easily we can simplify this to wb. So, the velocity vector, the velocity, the speed, of the particle in a circular motion is given by the radius multiplied by the angular speed okay let's move ahead we'll keep this in our mind we'll leave this for later we all knew what was the velocity vector the velocity vector was given by negative w b sine W T I plus W B cos W T J. This was a velocity vector, okay? Now we can differentiate this to get the acceleration vector. So the acceleration vector is the prime of the velocity vector. So the acceleration vector is given by negative w square b cos wti plus 
no, or negative w squared b sine w t j. Okay? Now, there's something very interesting about this, okay? Let's see. What do we think is interesting about this? Let's take w square b as common, or more better, we'll take negative w square b as common. So we will have negative w square b, we'll take it out as common, and then we will have left with, or in fact, let's just take negative w square as common, we'll be left with b cos w t, and then We'll, uh, we'll be left with this, sorry, sorry about that. I'm always very careful about my brackets because if you mess up the bracket, you can mess up the entire sum. And then plus B sine W T J. Okay, perfect. If you guys remember, this part is actually the position vector. So, we can write this down as acceleration is equal to negative w square of the position vector. Okay, perfect. Now, there are some very interesting observations that we can make from this particular formula. Let's write down this particular formula at the top and let's make those observations, okay? So, we know that the acceleration is negative w square of the position vector. Okay, now we can see that the acceleration is directly proportional to the position vector or the acceleration is multiplied by any constant of the position vector. So, the first and the foremost conclusion that we can make is acceleration of a particle. is parallel to its position vector, is parallel to the position vector, to its position vector. Remember guys, this is for circular motion, okay? These conclusions are for the circular motion, okay? Okay, perfect. Next conclusion that we can make. The next conclusion that we can make is due to the negative sign here. This negative sign tells us that acceleration is actually exactly opposite, or in other words, 180 degrees to the position vector. Acceleration is exactly opposite to the position vector. Acceleration is exactly opposite to the position vector. To the position vector. Okay guys, so these are the two beautiful conclusions that we came up with from uh, object moving in a circular motion. Okay, now perfect. Now let's go ahead and let's analyze a uh, projectile. So let's do the analysis for a projectile. Remember, I will be solving specific examples, uh, which will be for two-dimension and three-dimensional space, uh, like after this uh, explanation of uh, this projectile. But first of all, we need to understand the general situation. Let's say a projectile, an object of, a, of mass m, okay, so the force acting on it downwards is m g okay is actually fire okay with an initial velocity of v naught okay perfect the angle of elevation that it has been fired from is theta we do not know the projectile hits the ground with 
when and the range that's the range of the projectile the, this is the maximum altitude of the projectile as a projectile can reach the maximum altitude and this is the initial height of the projectile perfect now let's analyze this okay before we go on let me make clear the only force acting on the projectile is a downward force due to gravity okay perfect so what can we say we can say that f is equal to m a okay perfect anyway before we go ahead let me tell me let me tell you the output is a positive direction and from left to right is the positive direction okay so now f is equal to m a so now what we can do is we can also write this as m a is equal to negative m d and the j vector because uh, the only thing that's acting is the vertical so that's the i j and k so right yeah so that will only be the k vector sorry that will be the k vector um uh, so guys i'm sorry about that that's the j vector we should have the j vector here because it's moving the x y plane only so the j vector and when we see this we can cut them out we can cut the m out so we'll be left with the acceleration is equal to negative d uh, in the j vector direction perfect okay let's go ahead and uh, let's do the integration why we do the integration because integration of acceleration is actually the velocity vector integration is equal to of acceleration negative j okay when we integrate this on our left hand side we get the velocity vector and the velocity vector is actually equal to let's see negative gt j plus c now we actually do not know what is the c vector c is a vector it's a constant vector but we do not know what it is so to know that we can have an analysis on this side of the board if you don't mind so if you if you remember i told you that the initial velocity is v naught with an angle of elevation of theta okay so the uh, if you remember uh, the j component of the velocity will be v naught sine theta and the i component will be v naught cos theta so when t is equal to zero we will be left with v naught is equal to we will be left with v cos theta in the as an i component and plus v not to be v not remember sine theta in the j component okay perfect now we can replace them right here what we can do is let me remove this line what we can do is v is equal to v not cos theta in the i component plus v naught sine theta and then minus gt in the j component perfect so we got the velocity vector also so now let's write down the velocity vector and we will focus on the velocity vector alone the velocity vector is given by 
as I mentioned earlier, V naught cos theta in the I component, okay, plus V naught sine theta. minus gt in the j component okay from this we can make a particular conclusion from this we can make a conclusion that the velocity vector in the horizontal direction in this direction always remains constant no matter where you are so the velocity vector one conclusion we can make velocity in the horizontal direction is always constant in the horizontal direction is constant because you see there is no changing variable here there is no t here okay it's constant now let's integrate the velocity vector when we integrate the velocity vector we we remain with the integration of the velocity vector is given by this term will become v naught cos theta t i okay remember why didn't i integrate cos theta because the integration is with respect to dt so plus this this part will become v naught sine theta t and then minus gt square over 2 j plus another constant vector c1 okay so this is the position vector so the integration of the velocity vector is given by the position vector now let's write this down on the top so we can further analyze it okay So let's write this down. So the position vector R of the particle in the projectile is given by V naught cos theta into T in the I component plus V naught sine theta into T minus 1 upon 2 dt square in the j component plus a constant vector that we do not know. Now we all know that in the starting the position vector so r0 when t was 0 r0 is actually equal to hj. If you remember why hj because starting in the horizontal direction it was at 0 and the position the vertical position was actually h so it is hj so now let's replace everything there when we replace everything there when we replace t is equal to zero there we are getting an r naught with hj we'll have sj is equal to this will go to zero because t is equal to zero this will be zero because t is equal to zero this will be zero because t is equal to zero and then c1 will be left with c1 is equal to sj so the position vector r can be rewritten as the position vector r can be written as v naught cos theta t i plus and then h h plus v naught sine theta t minus one upon two gt square and that's the j component okay so this is the new position vector okay guys so now let's go ahead and uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and let's see how we can actually analyze different things such as the range okay what's the range of the particle what's the uh, maximum altitude of the particle 
all these things we can actually analyze from the position vector formula and from the velocity for vector formula. So let's write down the position vector formula and let's write down the velocity vector formula. Okay. So if you guys remember, the position vector formula is given by the position vector formula is given by B naught cos theta of t into i and then the, uh, the j component is given by h plus v naught sine theta t minus 1 upon 2 g t square j okay now the velocity vector that we have found out is actually v is equal to we have v naught cos theta in the i component plus v naught sine theta minus we'll have gt as the j component now these two is these two vectors are enough to analyze the analyze the different things that we need first of all the maximum altitude the maximum altitude is is reached by the particle when the velocity vector stops increasing that means that when this is actually equal to zero the vertical component of the velocity vector is actually equal to zero so we can have it written as v naught sine theta minus gt is equal to zero we will have gt is equal to v naught sine theta and t is equal to v naught sine theta over g okay now this value of t can be put in the vertical component of the can be uh, can be given in a vertical component of the the opposition vector to give the maximum altitude so the maximum altitude can be given as the maximum altitude can be given as h is equal to a is equal to h plus v naught sine theta and then t was v naught sine theta over gt okay and then minus one half g and then it was the t was v naught sine theta okay over and then what we will have is over gt square over gt and then t was square so we'll have it here as g square and uh, when we have it here as d square and uh, we will be sorry to be only t here so we will be left with g square square okay so this can be simplified as I'll write down this here. This can be simplified as a is equal to h plus v naught square sine square. It can be simplified as v naught square sine square theta. Okay. Over g minus one half so g squared okay what we have is here is um we will we will have to square so it will be g square right so it will be g square right so in a denominator when it is g square so g and g will cancel uh g square and g will cancel in the denominator we will be left with let me write down this in a little bit bottom so it's more clear i'll repeat the steps again i think it was becoming a little bit ambiguous so altitude the maximum altitude can be given by h plus v naught 
sine square theta over g minus one half and if you see the denominator will be g square so g and g square will get cancelled we will be left with g and on top it will be v square sorry here also v square v naught square sine square theta okay if you simplify this further this particular step further if you simplify this particular step further you'll notice that this is one, 1 minus 1 upon 2. So 1 v square sine square theta over g minus 1 upon 2 v square sine square theta upon g. So you will be left with a is equal to h plus 1 upon 2 v square sine square theta upon g. There you go. That's the maximum altitude. Okay. Let me write, keep that as it is for now. Okay, there we go. That's the maximum altitude. I'll write this down here so I can use that space. Okay, I can actually use that space to analyze the range. So what happens in the range? The range is a little bit more complicated. No, not so complicated, but requires a little bit of algebra. The range is actually, the range is actually reached by the time, okay, the range is actually reached by the time when this particular thing, this particular uh, component, the vertical component is actually zero. So the vertical component will be zero by h is h plus v naught sine theta t minus 1 upon 2 gt square is equal to 0. So the vertical component of the uh, position vector is 0. So what we can do is we can make t the subject of the formula using the quadratic equation. The quadratic equation says that the quadratic equation will say that t is equal to negative v naught sine theta plus minus v square sine squared theta v square sine squared theta okay so we have v square sine squared theta and then minus 4 into a into c so c is h so 4 into h into 1 upon 2 gt square so you will get 2 h g t square over 2 into a so the a will be negative okay so sorry this will be positive guys because negative 4 ac and a is already negative so i'll put here positive and over negative of 2 into a over 2a so 2a will be negative g t square okay Perfect. So now you'll get two values because I see you see I put plus minus sign one of the values will be positive t One of them will be negative of t. So what you do with the negative of t you reject it because you know time can never be negative It's always positive and you take a positive value That's the time when the particle will reach or impact the ground you take the time back and you actually put that in the This time is known as t range the time when the particle will hit the ground and you put this t r r is equal to you put this t r in the horizontal component of the position vector and you will get the range so you see how we can use vectors and some knowledge a little bit knowledge of physics to actually analyze a projectile motion so now what we will do is we will go ahead and look at some of the examples of particles moving in three-dimensional space and two-dimensional space but the basic concepts will be of these two scenarios that I have described before you